on this episode, I go back outside because you asked for it. This is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 144 of the Ask Gary V Show. It is a Friday, a beautiful Friday here in New York City. The Pope is coming through, causing a lot of ruckus traffic wise. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm in a good mood because my official Jets Eagles prediction is coming up. India's back, that always feels good. And, uh, and yesterday's show got a lot of great comments, a lot of good feedback from the show. We went deep. Quite emotional, a little heartache uh, on episode 143. So, uh, India, let's get into the, sh- the, the show. show. Let's do it. Almost. I, I I feel satisfied that I got you on the on the early uh, on the early come up. So. Um, From Anthony. Anthony. Actually, no, we're gonna start with Ari. Oh, what happened, to Anthony? Sorry. Anthony's is like fun, so we'll do it later. Well, why can't we do? Well, why can't we start 144 with some fun? I like to set the pacing. Fine, set your pacing. Go ahead, Ari. <laughs> All right. Well, now I feel like you're going to be judgmental, Ari. Uh, Ari's questions in deep shit. Ari asks, how can I deal with the perfectionism and feeling like someone else can do it better, preventing me from getting stuff done? I don't even understand. Do it again? How can I what? How can, like, how, what do you do when... No, no, read it again. I was like, okay, you went too how fast. How can I deal with perfectionism? How can I deal with perfectionism? Ari. Ari, go ahead. I understand, not me. Thanks, India. And feeling like someone else can do it better, preventing me from getting stuff done. Got it. So he he not only wants everything to be perfect, he always has a sense that somebody else can do it better. Yeah, probably. Uh, Ari, you need to get over yourself. Like, you know, the, the reality is uh, I, I think speed trumps so much that I'm blown away by people that get caught up in this. And really, it just leads to you being disproportionately not successful because you're too slow, you're overthinking things, uh, and I feel like a lot of times people screw things up by trying to do too much uh, instead of just letting it be. Uh, You know, that's why I like doing one take. You know, it it just, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. You get another at bat another day in the future, like, uh, you know, I don't know if I can motivate you through this answer to say, you know, get over yourself, move on, change. I think it is a DNA thing. I think it's tough for people to break out of that habit. I'm absolutely massively thankful that I'm completely the other way. Uh, I probably go too fast. I probably only execute at 94%, 96%, 87%, 91%, 86% <laughs> consistently, but I'd rather do five things than after I just told you that story, you doing one thing at 97%, not even 100 to begin with. There is no 100% Ari, it's just not the way it really is. The market decides if it was good or, or if somebody can do it better. Uh, there, there's a level of anxiety and a, a little bit of like getting over it that you're just gonna have to do. Uh, the fact that you're asking the question means you're self-aware that it's an issue. I think the best way to get things done in life is to just do them, right? Like you're gonna learn how to swim by jumping in the pool and learning how to swim. Uh, I think the number one thing you can do is make the next four to six projects and make it painful for yourself, just let it go. See what happens when you start tasting like, oh wait a minute, that wasn't so bad, away you go. People overthink, India. It's overthinking, guys. It's just, it's overthinking. Ready? Excuse me, excuse me. Do you think people overthink too much? Yeah, it's overthinking. She had no interest in being on the show. Eli asks, my company brokers commodities from the producers, hedgers to the consumers. All of my current and potential customers are large commercial and industrial property owners. What would be the best way for me to leverage social media marketing to try and increase my customer base in this strictly B2B atmosphere? P.S. Chris Ivory is a boss. Chris Ivory is a boss. I think he might not play this week for the Jets. I'm concerned. I would go out and create white papers on SlideShare 
and then run LinkedIn and Facebook ads against those white papers. What I mean by that is when you go into a B2B environment, I believe that long form becomes much more valuable than short form. I think that you reverse the headlines that people think that it needs to be all short form content. I think you know your audience, you know who your buyers are in a B2B environment, you know what they value, and you need to deliver on that. And so that's exactly what I would do. I would go out and I would create long form content that's valuable to them and not a sales pitch that's valuable to you, but content that those decision makers need, not just from what you do for a living, but holistically. Let me give you an example. Um, Even though I'm trying to get CMOs as clients, I might be able to put out content that teaches them about cloud computing, or IT infrastructure, or I make a white paper of how the CMO needs to interact with the CIO. These are valuable pieces of content that I brought to them that have nothing to do with hire me as an agency to do your work, but I brought you value in a nine page uh, deck that you saw on LinkedIn because I targeted you properly. So that's what I would think about. Create long form content in video, in audio, but in definitely deck form. B2B people love decks. Uh, and, uh, and get that in front of them through targeting on LinkedIn and Facebook. Put your branding on the bottom, make the last click go to your world. Uh, provide them vali- value. Do what I always say, become a media company, not just around what you do for a living, but what actually brings them value. And so what I would do is I would call, I, and let's get real tactical, I would literally call the 25 customers, 50 customers you have right now, call them and say, hey, Real quick, if you've got two minutes for me, maybe email them because people don't like people calling. Email them and say, do you have two minutes for me? I'm looking to provide you more value. You call them and say, hey, what are your other business problems or frictions besides what we do together in the world? If eight out of 25 of them say the same thing, that would become my first content pillar to put out to the world. Bringing value to people is an amazing way to guilt them into doing business with you, even if you bring value to them in a genre that has nothing to do with your own, but is still within the collective cohesive unit of what they do for a living. (sighs) Stefan, fire emoji out of my mouth at the end there. (laughs) Um, This one caused a lot of controversy this morning amongst the team, because we can't really, we don't know what he's talking about, we think it's funny. So one more time, the entire team was con- we were trying to unpack it all together at our desk because there was so much going on in the question. We're not really sure. We want to see if you understand it because none of us. Of course, I understand it. This is the Ask Gary V Show, India. Go ahead. I co-own two karate schools. In- I understand that he o- co-owns Just two wait. karate schools. Okay, go ahead. Like in influential Westchester, New York. I think he means they're influential. Yeah, I mean, in just Westchester. He just means Westchester. He was just hyperbolizing Westchester. Lizzie's from Westchester. Big ups. I handle biz, (laughs) not instructor. Well, well, I handle the business side. I'm not a karate instructor. Okay? How do I... (laughs) Stick with me, India. How do I... How do I tell members I'm now a realtor? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the name? XL Martial Arts. XL Martial Arts. I assume what you're saying is you do business development for two karate studios in Westchester. All your social media has been around that and now you're making a segue into becoming a realtor uh, and selling homes in the market. You're speaking to the right guy. I told the world for nine years, or for 15 years, that I was a wine merchant, and that I was a wine connoisseur, and that I was a wine expert, and then, just by putting out business content, because I had the chops, I told him that I was a business personality. If you know what you're talking about as a realtor, if, if you know, nice photo bomb, I appreciate that. I got you, man. If, 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 if you actually know what you're talking about from a realtor standpoint and you have smart points of view on the neighborhood dynamics, the upsides in which neighborhoods in Westchester are blowing up, uh, things of that nature, then I think you have a huge opportunity. And so the answer is quite simple. How, the, the final line is how do I now tell them how I'm real? I tell members I'm now a realtor. Members. Yeah. So I wonder if he's trying to sell people that are coming in for karate yeah, to like buy a home. Yeah. I, you know, the answer is I wouldn't sell them in the studio. I would just start putting out content 
uh, across all social platforms with your points of view, not just selling a home and saying, hey, come to my open house this weekend. No, say things like, you know, I see a huge opportunity in White Plains and south of the train station. I see that as a, a, a level, or in Harrison, they have a great school system. Like those kind of things. Provide value, provide value, provide value. Guys, we're 144 shows in. If you don't understand that you need to provide value versus selling to people, then you, you should stop watching the goddamn show. We got through that one, all right? Kevin asks, how can illustrators market themselves and distinguish themselves from the competition? Ooh, that's nice. I look like Jake Ben Ruby a little bit in that. You see it? I'm, I'm, I'm changing my angle here on you a little bit, D-Rock. Um, I, I think illustrators should really focus on Snapchat. I think Snapchat's a really interesting place where they can pop. Uh, I think that uh, Facebook targeting publishers so creating illustrations and then running $50 worth of ads against employees of publishers I think is a very smart place to go because I think people will notice. Shh. And, uh, and, then, and then I think what really, really would work is um, responding to people on Twitter around subject matters and then creating illustrations around those subject matters I think has enormous upside. If you can show your speed to illustrate around conversation in that environment, I, I think there's a, a real opportunity. So those are three tactics. I mean, look, an illustrator's gonna break out from the heap by being a great illustrator. Uh, how often you can put yourself in a position to have people see your work is going to become uh, the way that you're successful. I also think illustrate hacking, meaning Making illustrations of Gary Vee is gonna, I don't like using third person. Making illustrations of me is gonna make me see it. I would go after other micro influencers, uh, not A-list celebrities who are immune to that stuff, but other micro influencers, illustrate them, reply to them. I think that's an enormous uh, opportunity. Put it on Instagram and then tag them, because they'll see it. Those kind of things are cool. Anthony asks, hey Gary Vee, who's your all-time favorite jet and all-time least favorite jet and why? My all-time favorite jet and my all-time least favorite jet. Uh, my all-time least favorite jet is probably Kyle Wilson. He just ended it being a jet. Kyle, if you're watching this, I apologize. It's just the truth. Uh, it was a first round pick. He was terrible every second of the way. Uh, just broke my heart. Uh, just did not like the way he played. Didn't feel that he had ball skills for a, for a corner. Uh, even when like our starting corners would get hurt, he would have to not play. He was a terrible slot corner. I, I just really disliked him. My, my favorite all-time Jet is Al Toon. Uh, uh, I was a young kid. He was our best receiver, number 88. I loved him with all my heart. I love you, Al Toon, if you're watching. And, uh, and uh, that's it. Those are the real answers to that question. That's it. That's the show. All right. Official prediction time. This one's going to hurt. I have a feeling that Decker and Ivory are not playing. Uh, I'm, uh, I think the Eagles are playing for their lives. I think that the Jets, uh, I, I don't think, the Jets have never beaten the Eagles in NFL history in a regular season game. Uh, and, uh, and I'm very, very concerned of this. I'm still very affected by the 1994, 93-94 game where the Jets were up 21-7 against the Eagles at home and then Eric Allen had a 99-yard interception return for a touchdown as the Jets were about to go up 28-7 in Johnny Mitchell's coming out party game. Uh, Eagles went on to win. There's just something bad about this game. I'm taking a ton of VaynerMedia Eagle fan employees, Mark Evans and Brandon Resnick and Taggart and Lindsey Price. I, I think I'm bringing too many employees to the game. That feels wrong. And I think the Jets, uh, the Jets stumble here. Uh, I think that uh, I think they stumble here. Unfortunately, I'm going to go Eagles 20, Jets 16. Hurts my feelings to go that route, but that's uh, that's my official prediction. I'm not going to predict them to win every week. Uh, I will not be surprised if they win. I feel nice that they could win, but my official prediction is the Jets stumble this week, 20 to 16. Uh, but just to give you some insight, I think they rally next week in London. Anything can change, but. That's how I feel. Sorry for myself. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.